So this is a fun project that has actually been on and functional and everything, and it's actually been bolted to my door for a couple months now. But I just decided to make a video about it because of all the, the hype about Doctor Who in the past week or so, because the 50th anniversary special comes out tomorrow, um, as of me filming this. I'm sure that everyone will have seen it by the time this actually goes up on YouTube. But uh, I got the idea for this project playing with a laser pointer. There's a friend of mine that has this uh, this real bright purple laser pointer, and somehow we got the idea to shine it into the peephole of a door, which is a really brilliant idea, shining a laser into a place with lots of reflections and metal and things. But it was a relatively weak laser, so I don't think it was going to be very dangerous. But the point is that when we shined it through the peephole, the whole outside of the peephole actually glowed because the laser beam was being sent through an extremely divergent lens and I looked at that and thought wow that looks really cool and my second thought was that looks a lot like a Dalek's eye so I wanted to build one of these and put it on my door and uh, figured my roommate's also a Doctor Who fan he won't care so that became the project. Okay so this is what happens when you knock on my door right now if you knock the uh, Dalek flashes at you quite ominously. So the really cool thing about this is that we're actually transmitting information through the door that is going to be used in a circuit, an electronic circuit, that is not actually electronic information, it's vibrational information. So if you imagine that you've got a, like a string and you uh, shake the string and a ripple travels down the string, you haven't actually moved the string, but somebody at the other end of the string would know that you shook it. And that's basically what's happening with the knock. If you knock on this side of the door as that signal goes through the door all the, all the uh, atoms in the door start to shake a little bit so while the door is still where it was when you knocked on it something on this side of the door can tell that someone on that side of the door hit it and that's actually how you hear the knock anyway because then the door shakes the atoms in the air and you hear the air vibrating but uh, this is a piezoelectric sensor, and it's actually what picks up the vibrations. It's actually supposed to be a speaker, but you can run it backwards, and instead of using electricity to make vibrations, you can turn vibrations into electricity. Um, the signal from this sensor goes into this board, which has uh, two 555s on it that actually set up the pattern of blinking every time that this is triggered. Um, this is just the battery. All this stuff is held to the door with magnets because it's a metal door. It makes it really easy to build and move stuff around. And then this very large LED that is uh, magneted. Let's see, can I, there we go. <laughs> that is magneted into the peephole is what actually does the blinking. So this is the business end of the door. All right, so. Removing the battery, the circuit basically has three main components. The sensor, the circuit itself that does the processing, and then the light. And how the light interacts with the door is interesting too, so I'm going to talk about all three of these. First, the sensor itself. This is a piezoelectric crystal, and a crystal is anything that has a, a repeated atomic pattern, basically. If you have a few atoms in the same position, and then you repeat them, that same arrangement of atoms next to it and then next to it, and so you've got the same structure repeated over and over again. But a piezoelectric crystal, as in what's in this little black disc here, is actually made of electric dipoles. The, uh, or the, the repeat unit is made of very small electric dipoles, so you have lots and lots and lots of very small electric dipoles. Now, a dipole is anything that is basically two charges that are held apart. So you could imagine two large like metal spheres with a spring in between them or something like that. And if you were to apply a strong enough electric field across those, the spheres would actually push in and expand out based on the field that you've applied. So we have motion and possibly oscillation if you're on a spring right there uh, initiated by the application of an electric field. So what I'm using this for is actually running it in reverse. When you knock on the door, you're making the crystal shake a little bit, which is making the a charge appear on the plates that would normally be sending a charge into the crystal. So 
instead of uh, creating an oscillation with an electric field, you are creating an electric field with an oscillation. And that electric field can be read by this circuit. Now, it's got this, which is actually what I, it's a uh, very small trim pot. You can see there's a little um, spot for a screwdriver right there. That's what actually allows you to control the sensitivity. And it also has two 555 timers. And the first of those 555 timers that I have on the diagram here in green is actually what makes the uh, light come on. And that one is just a straight, every time it sees the uh, signal come from the sensor, it will turn on for like a second and a half or something like that. And it will just send a high for a second and a half and then drop off. Now, the uh, second timer, which I have red in the diagram, is actually the timer that does the blinking. So it's going on and off, not and off, not and off, not and off, not and off. And when the first timer is high, the second timer is going on and off, not and off. So the result of this is that you have something that goes on and off, not and off, for about a second and a half. And the second timer outputs directly to the LED, which, if I plug this in here, you can see that the uh, LED doesn't actually make a very big spot on something that's I'm only that far away from it. So what you would wonder is how can you actually see it through the door? Now if you imagine that you have a door with just a hole through, like if you remove the peephole on the door, all you'd be able to see is straight across the hall. You might be able to see the entire door that is across the hall from you depending on how thick the door that you're looking through is. Now, what the peephole does is actually take light from all around the door and focus it down so that it can come right into your eye. So, if you're running that backwards and you have a light instead of your eye, the light is going to be coming out of the peephole and then it is spread all around the hallway. So, you don't need to be standing right in front of the door to see the light. You can actually see it from anywhere outside because that's how people are supposed to work. It's supposed to take light from everywhere outside and bring it in. We're just using it backwards. A lot like we're using this backwards. This whole project is just using things for the exact opposite purpose of what they were intended. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically it. I mean, there's some interesting physics involved with how the sensor works or the optics of the door with the light, but it's a pretty easy circuit to put together. Um, the first timer is in monostable mode and second timer is in a-stable mode. You can tune the blinking however you want with, uh, I mean, the, those two timer modes, the circuits for those are right out of the data sheets. So it's something that's pretty easy to figure out. And it's just a fun thing to have bolted to your door because everybody comes by and wants to knock on it and see that it, I mean, people don't just have doors that blink when you knock on them. It's, it's a novelty. So... Sometimes, though, you do get people that will come by and blink uh, blink on the door, knock on the door repeatedly, just because they know that it'll drive you nuts. And those people wouldn't be as much of a problem if you could replicate some of the other traits of a Dalek.